Hello and welcome back to another video demo. Today, we're going to be overviewing a new Innovation Lab store release for ServiceNow, the alert automations feature for the Service Operations workspace. This new ITOM feature provides visually driven, no-code ways to define service enrichment, grouping, and escalate and notify rules, all at a team or global basis. Let's dive in and see what some of these new capabilities look like in the product. To navigate to the new Alert Automation app after installing the Innovation Lab Store application from the ServiceNow App Store, you're going to see this new icon in the lower left of your nav called Automations. From the Automations tab, you'll see three distinct categories, and we'll be adding to this in the near future. Add Service Context, Grouping, and Escalate and Notify. It's important to note that these automations do run in sequential order. So first, your add service contacts rules will run, then your grouping rules, and finally, your escalate and notify rules. And within each rule type, the order, of course, designates when each individual rule will run relative to other rules of the same type. So let's dive in and look at creating a new automation for this first type of rule of adding service context which is a great way to enrich your alerts that are coming in the system so that they're easier to understand and can be routed and reported on more effectively. I'm gonna click Create Automation, and that's gonna bring me to this new UI, which on the left-hand panel will show me recent events that came into the system, and on the right-hand panel will show me the ability to either A, extract alert fields, so for example, taking in a field that came in from the additional info. So here I could see there's a internal name key. I can take that and I can see what the value is from this uh, source event here, impact calculation. And then I can write my own regular expression for what to look for to extract that data out. In addition to extracting alert fields, I'm also able to create and set new alert fields and doing so by concatenating one or more fields into another field. And so for example, I could take maybe one of these additional info fields, like let's take metric value, and then I can add to it the actual standard event field for metric name. And so you could see I select metric name. And we could put both of that into, let's say a description field or short description field and so forth. And so this is a great way to, again, concatenate, take values that are coming in from additional info that may not have been mapped to a standard item alert field, and then to do that mapping. And you could do, of course, multiple values. You also have the opportunity to take that value and set it as a tag on that alert record. So a great new capability for enriching and making sense of your alerts through automation. It's important to know too that for that rule that we just created, and we can easily find a rule by searching here on name, we could do a simple search on filter contains. But what we can also do is keep in mind, set if this rule should be for a team or if it should be globally across the system. And so if you select a specific team, like let's say application development for who manages this automation, you'll see in the trigger conditions, automatically this condition for assignment group is application development gets added. And that's a theme you'll see across these new automation rules in service operation workspace. The next rule type we're gonna look at is a grouping. And here under grouping, it's gonna be using in the backend the tag-based grouping features. As with all grouping rules, you'll be able to set order, define uh, the clustering time frame. And let's actually take a look at defining new automation. So we're going to call this our latency grouping. And we want any alert that is a P1 that shares the same, let's say, value of latency or similar latency metric to go ahead and get grouped together. So we're going to say anytime within 30 minutes for, and let's just pick again another team for this ITSM engineering team. And you'll see again, Simon Group is ITSM Engineering. Whenever we see an alert that comes in and the priority, or in this case, let's actually say severity is critical, then we're gonna wanna go ahead and qualify it 
to run through this alerting and this alert grouping. And so how the alert grouping works with tag-based grouping is you could look at any number of fields and group alerts automatically that are coming in that satisfy the initial condition where the selected field is the same. So for example, if I selected alert fields and then assigned to, anytime the assigned to is the same, it would be uh, the same. Or in this case, metric name. If I got six alerts in, three of them had one metric, three of them had another metric, in this regard, the first three would be grouped and the second three would be grouped. In our example though, we wanted specifically looking for that latency metric name. And we actually want some variations in case it's typed differently. So to get variation, I can actually come in and do is fuzzy match. And we could, for example, put in 80%. And then so now this will look for text similarity if it's at least 80% similar between these two different metrics. But because we wanted exactly that word latency, we're going to come in and we could do something like a pattern match and quite literally, you know, put that value in. Uh, and this will have to follow standard regular expression matching. So a lot of great capabilities and we can use not only alert fields, but we could extract out additional info keys. So if we have a new uh, field that got set from additional info, we could apply that same form of grouping, we could look at tags, and we can also look at fields on the CI that's set. So kind of dot walking, the CI's uh, managed by team, if it's the same, group it together, or the CI's, um, you know, location, maybe we want to do location-based grouping, and so on. So this is a great way, again, to now create new automation in the system and do it from a front end where a non-admin user can actually write that new grouping rule. The last type of grouping rule we've added is escalate and notify. And so here we can again create a condition. So let's say latency alerts. We'll do a similar condition where we say if the metric name is latency and the specific, um, the specific priority or severity is one, then we're going to go ahead and create that incident. And so this is another great capability where you could define it globally or at a specific team level again. And so say for the securities team, anytime they see that coming through, they'll be able to create an incident and map values over from that initial uh, alert over to that incident. So we'll set the incident description to be the same as the alert description, and you could set uh, additional fields as well. So three unique ways to do automation, one for enriching an actual alert in the data, two for grouping similar alerts together. And again, keep in mind, you'll be playing around with the condition you want to use, depending on how specific or generalized you want the grouping to be. So here we could do something like this if we only want latency alerts to come through. And the third thing was that escalate and notify. And these rules, as you could see, will either be global rules generally set by central teams and by admins, or they'll be team-based rules set by a member of a team. Now that we are familiar with the different concepts of the different alert automation rule types available, let's take a look at an example with an actual alert that's been triggered. For this example, I'll rerun us through three rules I've created. One rule is to extract data to the description field. And this is a service context-based rule. Here we could see I've selected the compose alert fields option and I'm sending the events metric name, resource and description into the description of the created alert. Secondly, I've created a automation notify and escalate rule that will take any incident where the description contains San Diego assigned to this SRM networking team, and it's going to go ahead and create an incident for that alert. So any alert, better said. And finally, I have a grouping rule where any alert coming into this SRM networking team, I am indicating that if it shares the same location on the CI, I'd like it to group together. And so what I've done is I've created manually a new alert here. And we can see that that alert was against this networking team's 
configuration item. We see that's the metrics name of latency loading, and it has a resource of SD server. And as a result, the description became latency loading SD server, San Diego data center health update. And that's because we can see in the activity now, which rules ran. So I know that we automatically extracted that additional info. I know that we escalated to an incident using our incident escalation. And I also can see that a grouping occurred and a new tag based cluster was created because this networking configuration item had the same location as another item. So it's very easy to get explainability out on what your alert automation rules are doing across service context, across the grouping and the escalate and notify.